Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Jennifer Taylor, and today I am going to talk to you about analyzing nominal data in SPSS. But before we begin, I want to review a little bit about measurement scales. So we have these different scales of measurement. We have ratio scales, interval scales, ordinal scales, and nominal scales. And today we're talking about the lowest level of scales, which are the nominal scales. And these are simply uh, identity-based scales, such as gender, brand purchase with yes or no answers, or with categorical answers that have no hierarchical uh, order to it. It is the lower, lowest level of measurement. But what is nominal data? Well, nominal data is, uh, the measurement items for nominal data, they tend to be, Kevin, sorry, they are categorical. There's no hierarchical order. There's no one category is better than the other. They, it reflects the categorical descriptions of these characteristics of the attribute that is being measured. It also assigns a numerical value to a description of the characteristics. So whatever you label the category, you're also assigning a numerical value to so that SPSS can analyze it for you. Uh, some examples are gender, favorite pizza toppings, reasons for visiting, uh, preferred menu items. Those are all questions that can be asked uh, to collect nominal data. The answers would be categorical. There would be no hierarchical order to them, um, as well as the state that you live in. So what statistics do you report with nominal data? Well, here's a nominal data analysis checklist. You're gonna, you can do the mode, frequency counts and frequency uh, percentages. Those are the only three analyses that you can do on nominal data. And so now the question is, how do you do this in SPSS? Uh, so first, what I'd like you to do is access your pets and more SPSS data. This is either provided to you in your Blackboard or um, Canvas uh, tutorial content folder, or there's a link below in the YouTube description box that you can click on. But open that data set. And that should look like this when you open it up. And so once you've opened it up, the first thing you want to do is identify your nominal variables. And as you can see in this data set, I, I have gone and labeled them for you. So ordinal ratio is RAT, ordinal is ORD, nominal is NOM, interval is INV. Um, and so you could easily look at this, but if you didn't have the variables labeled that way, how could you tell if they are nominal or ordinal or ratio? And so looking at this, you can look at the questions. And so for this first nominal variable, what was your primary reason for visiting Pets and More today? And then you would select one because it's your primary. And if you look at this scale, I wanted to make a purchase. I was just browsing, I was researching a product or service, and other please specify. These are categories. There's no hierarchy to them. And so people could just select one as their answer, and that would make it a nominal variable. We have this nom2, and notice how this has an underscore one, an underscore two, an underscore three. Um, I'll be talking about this in my in another video called uh, multiple response nominal variables. But typically when you see an underscore one, two or three, it is either a multiple response nominal variable or it can be a Likert scale. So you wanna look and see what the question is and then you wanna look at the responses to tell if it's which type of scale it is. But so the question is um, choose one or more races that you consider yourself to be. And in this case, if the respondent selected um, white, then it would have a value of one. If they have a value of zero, then they did not select it. Um, and each one of their options that they could have selected um, is essentially its own question with a one or a zero. A one if they selected it, a zero if they did not. 
Um, so that's a multiple response nominal. I will show you how to analyze that in a separate video. Uh, going down to this uh, nom three variable, what is your gender? Looking at the scale, male, female, other prefer not to answer. These are categories. They are not hierarchical. These numbers mean nothing more than a system to label it for calculating frequencies. Okay, so now that we've identified our nominal variables, let's analyze them. So how do you analyze nominal variables? And when I say nominal variables, we're only going to be looking at this nom1 variable and the nom3 variable, because those are just plain old nominal variables. This nom2-1-2-3456, this is a multiple response nominal variable. And like I said, we'll analyze that in a separate video. Okay, so to analyze <clears throat> nom1 and nom3, we're going to go to analyze descriptive statistics, frequencies, and Now we are now we are um, in this display. So I changed it in case you didn't see that. I right clicked on my mouse and I hit display variable names. You can toggle between display variable variable labels if you prefer to read the question or display variable names. I typically label my variables so I know which question they refer to. Not in this case, I labeled them according to their uh, scale type, but we know it's nom1 and nom3. Okay, so I have my two nominal variables and I've added them into this variable section. Now I'm gonna click on statistics and we know that while we have all of these different statistics that we could apply, it's a nominal variable, so we can only use mode. So we click mode, click continue, and charts. I want to create a chart uh, because I'm going to make a presentation about this. So I'm going to do a bar chart for this one, and I want it in percentages. So I clicked bar charts, and I clicked percentages, and I'm going to click continue. And uh, I'm interested in the format and mainly because it's nominal and you do this with nominal and multiple response nominal variables because they're categorical there's no hierarchical order i want the values to go from highest to lowest in my charts so that it can tell a, a story faster so i am going to click i'm going to click descending counts there we go, that's the only one I need to worry about. And we're done with that and we just click okay. And now we have our output, so we have our mode. And so for the first question, what was your primary reason for visiting? Um, the mode was one, the first answer, which is I wanted to make a purchase. Uh, for what is your gender, two, was the top answer, which was female. And so we have the mode and then we have our frequency tables, which tells us the count and the percent, the percent, valid percent. And the difference between percent and valid percent is um, sometimes you have missing data. Sometimes people didn't uh, respond to that question. And so it's, uh, the difference between using all the sample and only part of the sample. And then you have cumulative where it just adds each, it just accumulates until you get to 100%. All right, for gender, you can see the frequency, the percent, the valid percent. And now down to our charts. So as you can tell, it's in that descending order. Double check, this is in descending order also for gender, but these charts are charts that we can take and then copy and paste into our PowerPoint presentation to be able to make a presentation about our data. Uh, but before we do that, we need to clean up these charts because they, um, 
they're not as pretty as they could be. So double click on the first chart. And then we're gonna start by cleaning up this title, this top title. So uh, double click it. And then I wanna delete this selected choice. So I'm gonna click one more time. So that was a double click and then a single click. And that should get you in there to be able to make some edits. So I just wanted to ask the question at the top. So I cleaned up that selected choice because it just uh, doesn't look as pretty for the client when we're giving the client presentation. Um, this uh, is this access label. I'm going to delete. for this one, and then we have the access label for percent, which is okay. And now I wanna add data labels. So I'm gonna click, and then I'm going to, I clicked on the bar, and now it's highlighted as you can see. And now I'm going to, oops, let me get out of here. I'm gonna click and it's gonna highlight them all. I don't know if you noticed, but I did an extra click accidentally and then it only highlighted the first bar, which is not what I want. I want all four of them because then I want to right click and I want to show data labels. Oh, I did it anyways. I must have. Okay, right click. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I wanted to show the data labels. So you just click on the bars and then you right click and click on that show data labels. Um, and now we have data labels. It tells the exact percent and it helps tell that story. So we wanna get out of there and go back. Oops. Done with that and making those changes. So now I want to go down to the next one, which is my gender. Okay. Uh, the gender question is fine. I'm gonna get rid of this access label because it's, it's just repetitive. Uh, we have percent, that's correct. Uh, we wanna add those data labels. So we click on it and then we right click to get the menu and then we click show data labels. And now we have the data labels and then we click out of it and we go back to our output screen and we have what's our gender. Now you want to make sure that you save this file. You're gonna need it later. Um, if you're gonna do a presentation and you're gonna use this analysis. So make sure you save it, just go to file, save as, and then make sure you save it in an appropriate place. Um, after you've saved it, then go ahead and I'll show you how, how you put it in a PowerPoint presentation because you'll need that for your project, but you, Click on it, so you click on that, and then you hit uh, Control C, and then you go into your PowerPoint presentation, and I already have a slide ready to create, and I just Control V, and then I'm gonna just manipulate the size. Oops. You wanna make sure that people, that you can actually read these category labels. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. There we go. And then, um, and then we give it a title, reason for visiting. All right. And that's how you analyze nominal data in SPSS and how you create a chart um, and put it into a PowerPoint presentation. 
I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Um, like it or ask questions in the content below. But other than that, I hope you have a great day.